Those of you who have been watching my most recent videos will know already that I am in the process of making movie reviews of all of the films nominated for Best Picture at the Academy Awards. And we are keeping on track with that with this review, which is for Darkest Hour, directed by Joe Wright and starring Gary Oldman, Kristen Scott Thomas, Ben Mendelsohn, Lily James, and many others. Darkest Hour takes place in the early days of World War II. It was at this time at which Winston Churchill, played by Gary Oldman, was appointed Prime Minister of Britain. Because of the timing of this, Churchill was faced with a crucial decision. Would he attempt to negotiate a peace treaty with Adolf Hitler, or would he end up continuing to fight on against incredible odds? And Darkest Hour tells the story of that decision. I feel compelled to start by talking about the performances in the film, which is not just because it's normally the first thing I talk about when I do a movie review, because you guys should know that I usually do that. I start by giving out the performances and my critique of them. And not because all of the performances are good, which they are. Everybody in the supporting cast is really fantastic. But Gary Oldman. Holy shit. Gary Oldman was nominated for Best Actor in a Leading Role at the Oscars. He won the Golden Globe for Best Actor in a Drama Film. And after seeing the film, I can definitely understand why. A lot of people are just assuming it's because he's playing a historical figure, which he is but that's not the only reason why. The best way that I can describe Gary Oldman's performance in this film is that he disappears. Not just physically, not just because he's caked with makeup, which by the way, I will just throw this out there, the makeup job on him in this film is fantastic. This isn't like in J. Edgar where it's so obviously makeup that you can actually see the lines where the makeup ends and the actor's real face begins, or where it looks like it just is liverwurst taped to the actor's face. The makeup on Gary Oldman really makes him look like Winston Churchill. It's not just a prosthetic performance, which it is partially a prosthetic performance because they had to make him up to look like Winston Churchill, but his overall demeanor, his mannerisms, the way he speaks, the way he reacts to things, in short, he fucking nailed it. Now, everybody who has heard of this film knows of it because of Gary Oldman's performance as Winston Churchill. Everybody's saying that that's the only thing worth talking about in this movie. And while I would say it is the film's strongest asset, I would not say the rest of the film is bad. There are definitely really good things about the rest of the film as well. For example, the cinematography and editing are both fantastic. There are some really great shot compositions and really cool ways in which some of the shots are put together. And while in some cases I would say they are a little bit flashy, they don't detract from what the film is trying to say. And the story is good too, in part because it follows the storyline that a lot of people like. It's about a guy who is facing against incredible odds, and a lot of people are not in his corner because they think of him as somebody who's not going to do a good job in making that decision that he needs to make. And along with this comes some really great dialogue. And there were some scenes, particularly scenes toward the end, and I'm not going to give away what happens, but there are some scenes toward the end that are really a joy to watch. Now I will admit the film is not perfect. As with any film that tackles a historical figure, there are historical inaccuracies. With that being said, as I've said before, Whenever I go to see a film that is about a historical event or a historical figure, I always take it with a grain of salt. I always know that there are going to be some liberties taken with history to make more dramatic elements. But there is a line that I usually draw in the sand where I say, is this film actually following history fairly closely enough to where it's still enjoyable and to where it's not distracting, or is it so wildly off historical track that you're like, bullshit that never happened and I can't pay attention now. Darkest Hour is definitely on the side of actually being close enough to history to where it's not distracting. And another thing that I will readily admit about the film is that even though there are some really good scenes, and even though the performance by Gary Oldman is fantastic and a joy to watch for anybody who enjoys good acting, there are some very slow moments in the story, and I can't really see myself watching this film a lot. While I would say that you should watch it at least once, I don't think I would expect a lot of people to watch it over and over again. And another thing that I have to say about this film is that it does a very good job with a particular thing that 
is related to another film, actually. If you know about the film Darkest Hour, you probably already know about the film Dunkirk. And Dunkirk was about the evacuation of a bunch of soldiers from Dunkirk, and one of the big decisions that Churchill has to make in Darkest Hour has to do with that very evacuation. I am planning on doing a review of Dunkirk next, but... What I will say about Dunkirk now is that it does a very good job of showing the war is hell element of that particular event. But what Darkest Hour does a little bit better is show how crucial that particular event was to history. Because even though Dunkirk does a very good job of portraying the event as an event, Darkest Hour does a better job of portraying it at its level of historical importance as a turning point in the war. And with that being said, I have to recommend both for different reasons, but they tie into each other very well. All right, guys, that's my review for Darkest Hour, and stay tuned for more reviews. Have a good night, everybody.